Atonement. Leviticus. <coughs> the Day of Atonement. I think. I haven't seen Karen in weeks. That's okay. Yeah. We're we are now in a form of worship. Where we're here to hear God's like word and forget all the worldly problems. I'd love to. Forget everything. Yes. Forget everything. Forget ordination paperwork. Forget <laughs> everything. The Day of Atonement. Didn't, did this just happen? Because I can't remember. It's It says, the date's in there. It says the third week in October. So I think Yom so, Kippur so might be. It was last week, probably. I'll Google it. You keep okay. going. Because I, I can't remember. I didn't have too much time to read the news this past week. But I thought I saw it coming up. Not sure. But the Day of Atonement, that is the most important day for devout Jews. And this is, this is the most important chapter in Leviticus because it describes that day. And it's very important because this is the day where, once again, all the sins of the Jewish people are temporarily forgiven. I know, I know. Temporarily, because mm. Mm. that's all God promised them at the time. It, this year, it was it began on Tuesday, October eighth, and it ended on the evening of Wednesday, October 9th. Okay. So they have their twenty four hours. I was listening to a radio show yesterday, and uh, the pastor who was was on there was talking to his Jewish friends, and he said, "So did you? Did you um, fast? Yes, we did. Did you go to temple? Yes, we did. And." Do you think your sins are forgiven? And the best that they could say, every Jewish person he spoke to, the best they could say is, we hope so. Mm -hmm. We hope that all our sins were forgiven. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that's the point that they're left with. Remember, they had to have a sacrifice in the morning to take care of all their sins during the day. They had to have a sacrifice at night to take care of all their sins during the evening. Then if they had a special sin, they had to offer a special sacrifice. And then once a year, they had the Day of Atonement where the sacrifice wiped out the rest of their sins. But what if they committed a sin right after the Yom Kippur service? Hmm. Then once again, they'd be in a sinful state. That's why they would say, we hope so. Same thing with, with every religion that focuses on works, righteousness. There are, there are Catholic priests who don't know if they're going to heaven because they haven't done enough. What does the Bible tell us? Nothing and and we're going to hear it again today in today's reading and today's sermon. Nothing we can do. Nothing we can do. Are priests going to go to heaven? I'm so just joking. <laughs> I'm sure I know dogs. I know dogs go to heaven. Yeah. I, I know a lot of good Catholics. Like I'm just <clears throat> well, but that that is the thought process of some of them oh, yeah. that they haven't done enough. Now that's not everybody, because um, some Catholics have the belief that in faith, the faith in Jesus' death alone will save them, which is true. And they know then that they will, without a doubt, go to heaven. Sure, if, if, you, if you sin against God, if you walk away from God, you're going to go to hell. But if you, if, you, if you repent of your sins, believe that Jesus died for your sins, then we know, we have that, that blessed assurance as we hear in the hymn. And as we see throughout the Bible, we can always backslide, but we have to take, we have to make sure that we don't. We have to, we have to make that attempt. I think it was the old way of thinking because when I was in the Catholic Church with the nuns, you know, you get a coin that goes from this pot to this pot every time you do a good deed. Mm -hmm. And that's mm. the way I was raised. Mm. But it oh. changed. Oh, yeah, that's how you built your, your riches to heaven. Oh. But that's, that was 19, you know, it still exists. 60s and 70s. It oh, does it? still exists. Okay, well, still, that why, was my old that's way. That's why purgatory still exists. Yeah. Because you can't do enough, as we know, you can never do enough. Well, that's why the Catholics think, think purgatory exists. Yeah. Because Red's mm -hmm. looking at me like, 
Yeah. No, yeah. we do not yeah. believe in purgatory. Well, Sister <laughs> Rafina will argue that with you, but she's dead and gone, I'm sure. Yeah, I had a Sister okay. Rafina, too. She I beat the heck out of me. Oh, <laughs> the Bible, it says purgatory. Nowhere. Nowhere once. in the Bible does I just it say want once. Yeah. Not, not once. Where, <laughs> where, did they, where did they come up with that, do you think? Or maybe that's too that much. Is, it's, that is Roman pantology. That is Roman yeah, pantology. Yeah. That, that, is, that is, you put the coins to go across the river Styx, and then you have to work your way through yeah. right. the, the layers of hell until you get like to this Dante's Eden-ish Inferno. kind of right. place. Dante's in, yeah. So it's, it's, it's all based on Roman mythology. All of it, and it's it's in the catechism, and they'll tell Roman you. Roman Catholics. Yeah. Right. Roman, yeah. Yeah. Because we do not we don't have a catechism. Now Lutherans have a catechism, which is different than Catholic, of course, um, and Pre Presbyterians have not quite a catechism, but they have. Yes, mm -hmm. of course, like kind of like a course of study. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, don't so, they use the story of the rich man and Lazarus to back that up, and then paradise. Because it, we're way, still waiting for the final judgment mm -hmm. that, that comes after the millennial reign. Yeah. So I mean, as we found out through our study of doctrine, there are many interpretations of Scripture. And we can see where um, adult baptism comes from. We can see where infant baptism comes from. We can see where predestination comes from. We mm -hmm. see that all in Scripture. But that's why we have to read the entirety of the Bible to see what is... The, the overlying message that, that God's trying to tell us from, some, from the beginning of time. We forget the overlying message and argue about what kind of baptism is the right kind of baptism when it doesn't sprinkling matter. and pouring and, and dunking all occurred in the Bible. Mm -hmm. every, every form yeah. of baptism yeah. used today currently <laughs> in all the different denominations, all of them are biblical, so all of them are valid. Right. In just, my mind. Just... just Asking where in the Bible is the sprinkling, I didn't realize that. The sprinkling was when the babies were getting the moil. Do you know who, what a moil is? No. He, they would sprinkle the, sprinkle the child's head before they circumcised the yes. child. Oh. And that was kind of like a... Okay. Uh, I have a, a document that um, I'll bring the next class. And it goes over uh, the verses that give us sprinkling, dunking, and pouring. Okay, so I'll bring that next week. Hmm. Never knew that. So, none of these doctrines are wrong because they're backed up by Scripture. It's just the way we interpret it. So we have to remember that we, we can't look at other denominations and say you're wrong. Well, it's in Scripture. And that's the way it's interpreted. And like I've said before, I believe God allows all the different denominations so we can reach that many more people. Because believe me, <laughs> the, the United Methodist theology is not going to reach everybody. Yeah. And the Baptist theology is going to reach those people, but not other people. And then the Lutheran theology and then the Catholic theology, it's going to reach all different types of people. It's like the type of chocolate you like. That's right. You know? <laughs> do you like Mr. Goodbar? Do you like extra dark special would, chocolate? Would you walk into Bressler's if they had just one flavor? No. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> You might have your favorite, but yeah. if you want to have butter pecan, you want to have butter pecan. Yes, exactly. <laughs> How would you answer the argument then that, you know, Jesus was baptized, not sprinkled? You know, if it was good enough for Jesus. Oh, absolutely. And I would, I would dunk, no doubt. If, if, I, if I had access to, uh, I do have access, um, I would like to do a baptismal ceremony at Damien's Pond. Mm -hmm. Because to me, that, that's just incredible. And if we could do it in a river, to me that would be even better. Mm -hmm. But I don't have access to that, so in the meantime, we'll do the pouring. I'll try to get as much water on people as possible. Just ask Jason. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, what head? So, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Now another question yeah. is, first paragraph, Numbers uh, 1530. Um, blasphemy. When they were cut off, were they removed physically from the camp and yes. sent out like the scope, scapegoat yeah. to die? Yeah, and that's why it was so critical, because they were cut off from their people. They were kicked out of camp, they had no resources, so they probably had to find, if they wanted to survive, mm -hmm. find another group to go with. 
They didn't have the death penalty, but it would be like it. Pretty darn close. Pretty close. Well, they have to forge for their own food, water, everything. Or go to the next town and be with them. And the protection of the multitude. Right. Because mm -hmm. right. you're out in the wild, there's a bunch of stuff happening out there. So, Yom Kippur is so special that rabbis just refer to it as the day. It is, this is the day that everything happens. Um, and all sins are forgiven except blasphemy. Mm. Like, uh, like Gary was saying in, in, in Numbers 5, chapter 15, verse 30, anyone who sins defiantly, whether native-born or foreigner, blasphemes the Lord and must be cut off from the people of Israel. So that's just like uh, when we say the only unforgivable sin is the sin against the Holy Spirit. When you, when you basically turn your back on God, that's what you've done. You turn, you, you're, you're saying God is not my God. And it makes sense to us. When you turn away from God, there's nothing, there's nothing left. That's the unfor one unforgivable sin. Um, chapter 16 is read in all synagogues on Yom Kippur. And rabbis also read Isaiah 15, uh, 57, 14 to 58, 14, which states that words to them, words alone do not atone for sins. Repentance and action are also required. So that's their highest day. That's the day. The day for the, the day. Jewish. Right. So and, Yom Kippur could also be called the Day of Atonement? Yep. Or it the is. day. Yeah. Right. Yep. All three... Um, Fly to, to young Where we lived, they gave the kids days off of school for that. Right. Because really? the, yep. we lived in Arlington Heights. Yep. And we were, there were um, a lot of synagogues. There was a, a couple Jewish people in, in Arlington Heights, but the next town north was Buffalo Grove. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. that was that was like uh, a Jewish enclave. The kids oh. would grow up in Skokie, move to Buffalo Grove, and then after they, if they were successful, then they moved to, to Highland Park. Highland yeah. Park was like the place. A lot of synagogues, a yeah. lot of, right. Yeah. Kind of like Pike County. Well, Shutting schools down for the first day of deer season. A lot yeah. of expensive dogs hats. <laughs> well, what they yeah. did is they said, to, they came to the school board and said, look, you're giving them Christmas off, and that's, you know, and Good Friday, we deserve this day. And they do. They got Yom Kippur they and should. Rosh Hashanah off. Right. Yeah. It was weird, but yeah, Joe had the Jewish house. Well, it wasn't off. weird. It I know, was, I just wasn't used to it. Did the like, school close down or they were yeah, just excused? No. Oh, no, school, school closed. closed down. Because yeah. enough kids would go. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Fair enough. Joe was, at one time, Joe was one of two um, Christians on his hockey team. Yeah. The whole rest of the team was Jewish. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. We grew up, he grew up with a lot, we grew up in that part of the mm -hmm. Chicago area. Mm -hmm. It's very Jewish. Yeah. Is, is Chicago, is there like, a Jewish sector. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Skokie. Like they yes. Well, there, there's a um, Skokie, like Christy said. That's mm -hmm. like, it's like an almost entirely Jewish neighborhood. Yes. And uh, but they have the best bagels. That oh. basically yeah. happened yeah. because so on the Sabbath you can't <laughs> drive to the temple, so you have to be able to walk to temple. Right. So every so you know every so many miles you had a temple so people could walk to it. Yeah. So, so they still do that now on Yom Kippur? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Still they fast. And they have the fast. they have the long braided hair with the hat they well, wear. Well, only, That's only the Orthodox. Yeah. Right. We've seen those, though, too. Yeah. So, yeah. And, just, not to get on track, but does, mm -hmm. are the majority still secular Jews in areas like that, too? Just like Christians, there's all different slices and dices. You'll have your Orthodox, you'll have your Reform, you'll have your traditional. Mm -hmm. So it just... We have Jewish friends. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the same thing that's happened to Christianity has happened to Judaism. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Different interpretation. It's an interesting way to grow up, though. We, learned, we had a lot of cultures around us. Yeah. So. Hmm. It, was, it was fun. It was. It was very fun. melting pot. A lot of Asians, too. And mm -hmm. to me, gefilte fish looks just like uh, left, not left, so. Ludic fish. Ludic yeah. fish. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gross, too. Yeah, that's kind of good. Shakes like jello. <laughs> okay, so, right, so uh, no, uh, not that or nor pig's no, feet. No. Okay, so we actually made it through the title. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, and, and then, but were you where it states here, which states that words alone do not atone for sins, repentance, and action are required. I mean, we can almost say that through the New Testament scriptures also, where where Paul says, "I will show you my faith by my actions." So as we as we accept the Lord as our Savior, our life should, through repentance and Amen. actions, prove it. Right. Yes. Right. The fruit of the Spirit. They should see right. yeah. speak clearly in their heart. We're different. Otherwise, they'd explain it. Oh, well, maybe they they never had it truly in their heart. We should be transformed. Yeah, what do you exactly, see? exactly. So once we're saved, it should be visible. Right. We should do the, the works of the Holy Spirit. We should uh, exemplify the fruits of the Spirit because we have been changed. That doesn't get us saved, but because we are saved, we should reflect that. So once again, you see that theme throughout the Bible. Yeah, it's the spoils of our labor after salvation go to Jesus' feet when He comes to reign. So, even though we have actions, those aren't actions aren't for us; they're for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, those actions may never, may very well not be from us. Yeah, they're but from Jesus. More than likely, us. they're not from us. You know, a lot of those times. Gives us different crowns in heaven. Yes, mm -hmm. different levels. Of there are some people who are just going to have the barest foundation. They're yeah. going to have a burnt tail. Burnt tail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, that'll be good enough. <laughs> that'll be a, that's a good start. So. More copies is a good problem to have. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we love it. More Do you have copies. a good crowd Praise today? God. Do you have a good crowd? Oh, oh amen. Okay. Good, good. Um, so we see also um, before in the couple earlier chapters, just once, God spoke to Moses and Aaron. Now, once again, he's speaking to Moses because Moses is, is a spokesperson. Moses is the guy that, that God tells everything to. God will give direction to Aaron, and he will give direction to the people, but when it comes down to rules, regulations, and procedures, and revelations, God's going to talk to Moses. And that's in verse 1. Um, verse 2, the Lord said to Moses, tell your brother Aaron that he's not to come whenever he chooses into the most holy place behind the curtain. He can't just pop in whatever he wants to. You know, it's interesting there in verse 1 still coming up with the Aaron's two sons being toasted. Yeah. Well, and as I was, After the death of his two yeah, sons. I was listening to that this morning during breakfast and I'm going... I'm shaking my head going, man, I, if I were Aaron, I'd be shaking in my boots. I'd be afraid to do anything wrong because God will punish me. You know, I was like, like, okay, now I'm supposed to do this. Okay, now I'm supposed to offer this offering. Okay, now this. I would be shaking. That's scary stuff. Yeah. Aren't you glad we don't have to do that anymore? I know. Just oh. make me even oh. rare. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. Amen. So we... Yes. Do not have to worry about this. Because I was scared. A piece of parchment around so I could make notes. Yeah. So um, in verse two, so Aaron can't have can't come behind the curtain whatever he wants to. What happened to wipe that out? The death of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Upon his death, the, the veil was torn. Matthew 27, 51. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. So that tells us God ripped that curtain wide open. It's very specific. From top to bottom, the temple was the curtain was torn in two. The earth shook, the rock split. Incredible. The high priest could only go to the Holy of Holies one day of a year. And we're allowed to come to God whenever we want to because of Jesus' death. We no longer have to worry about that warning that Aaron was limited to because we had a high priest that died for us. At the end of verse 2 it says, Some, I will appear in the cloud over the atonement cover. And it just occurred to me that this week that the atonement cover really was the mercy seat. Yes. Kind of separate yes. from the ark. Yeah. Right? Really? Mm -hmm. And we're going to see that later on 
during the, the sacrifices because the blood is sprinkled on the atonement cover. Yeah. And as we'll see when we get there, well, I might as well just say now, if we remember the construction of the ark, the, the cherubim were, had their wings over yeah. the seat because that's where God sits. God sits on the mercy seat. Mm. So when the blood was sprinkled uh -huh. on the mercy seat on the atonement cover, that was a direct offering to God to say that only by the blood of this uh, substitutionary sacrifice are we forgiven. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's once again the benefits of reading this slowly and able to dive in. Because if we're on a regular Bible study, you know, the Bible in one year, as humans we want to race through. Yeah. And we certainly would have raced through Leviticus. Oh, yeah. Because it's the same thing over and over again. Blood, 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 blood. But as we <laughs> Skin see, Jesus. as we see, everything means something, and it ties to Jesus so often. Yeah, it's incredible. Chapter sixteen has got so much hidden away in it. Oh, it's it's another one of those chapters where you, you, you say, "Oh, it's Leviticus," and then you start reading, and it's like, "Wow, no, it's so much more." The temple smelled with all that music.